Hello, today I'm going to go over the uh, process of how to light up your wood stove insert. There are two options to lighting this fire per the manufacturer. There's the flash fire method and then there's the long burn method. So we'll go over that now. So this is a Napoleon S25. We have the appropriate hearth protection down out here in front, although there's a little grout missing there we need to deal with. Sheepskin rug for playing Uno in front of a full burn fire. Uh, the shroud is attached. We've got the uh, existing natural gravity extraction blower uh, system in place. That's fine, no problem. We have a fully insulated liner going up the inside of the flue. This is where the uh, room air is recirculated and blows out. This is where the room air is drawn in underneath here. We have a little shim because sometimes these Napoleon S series inserts uh, have a little bit of a noisy tendency on the blower. So the first thing is to get in here and get the ashes out, inspect the ceiling baffle, make sure that uh, this baffle is in tight and towards the rear and these air holes are exposed. That's where part of the fresh air comes into the fire. Part of it comes in right here. This is called the air wash. It creates a moving sheet of air, drops down and goes under the fuel load. And then these guys create a reburn along the ceiling at the apex of the flame, trying to maintain that ideal 1200 degree Fahrenheit temperature. You can use a wet rag dipped in some of the white mineral ash wash it, it creates a light rouge or a uh, uh, basically an abrasive, a light abrasive on the ceramic glass to clean it very clean. That's already been done. So we'll go ahead and get this thing cleaned out and start building the two fires. And now next we're gonna go ahead and shovel out the ashes into a steel ash bucket. Very important uh, that you have a handy little ash shovel. Sometimes you can buy a bucket on Amazon that comes with an ash shovel, highly recommend that. That way you don't get it lost. These wood stoves, you don't need a real long tool. This was left over back from when it was an open style wood burning fireplace. You need a long shovel for open style. But for these wood burning inserts, a simple short uh, shovel is, is just perfect. Now when shoveling the ash, you're gonna reach inside, scoop it up, push it against the back wall, get a big shovel full. And if you have a second hand free, you can uh, bring it down close and tilt your ash bucket up to match the angle of your shovel so you don't get a big plume of white ash. So we'll go ahead and pull all this out, always in a steel ash bucket. Always take it outside and put it on a concrete surface. I can't emphasize enough, has to be on a concrete surface. These buckets are hot for days with ashes. The second thing is you always wanna make sure you don't put it near anything else. Uh, one person caught their dry cleaning on fire in their garage because they had uh, they put their ash bucket near their dry cleaning in the garage. So that was a bad idea. Another client burned their house, good chunk of their house down, my clients, um, when they put their ash bucket with a slightly open lid um, right next to their vinyl siding. Now let's take a quick look at the inside of this Napoleon S25. You'll notice that there are bricks in there, even on the Regencies, Napoleons, um, hearthstones, any kind of wood stove, wood insert that is lined with bricks, those bricks are doing an important job. They're taking direct flame heat off of the metal or cast iron surface that is the functional firebox wall. If you hit it with direct flame heat, what occurs is it shortens the life of the appliance, maybe from 25 years down to 20, maybe from 20 down to 15, depending on the user. Do not remove the ash from the uh, joints of the bricks. That's totally fine to have ash in there because what you're doing is continuing the uh, sort of surface of protection between the fire and the metal that its job is to protect. Uh, one thing to note is down in the floor, a clean, clean uh, inner surface is not a better inner surface. Just shovel it out every time. Don't get in there with a toothbrush and a vacuum cleaner. That's a bad idea. Just let the ash form the seal. All right, now it's time to go outside. We're gonna get some wood. I use a duck canvas bag I got on Amazon for about $40. Absolutely wonderful. Leather handles, it's the family favorite. We used to have an open style like log grate uh, next to this where we would store wood, but the spiders and bark and in the winter, the snow and the water would drip off, made a mess. This duck canvas has been absolutely wonderful. So I highly recommend it. Let's go get some firewood. All right, next we're gonna talk a little bit about firewood. I live in Colorado and so I have access to a lot of pine, ponderosa pine, uh, probably a few white pines. Um, we've got a lot of fir, Douglas fir out here and uh, spruce. These are all softer woods. Measured in millions of BTU per uh, cord, the 
the lightest duty wood is going to be like a white cedar. It's somewhere around uh, 12 million BTUs per cord. Now, to give you a rough frame of reference, our, uh, our fur here is probably going to be closer to the 18 million BTUs per cord. So it, it's a lot more. And then your hardwoods back east, your hickories can soar up as high as 24 million BTUs per cord. That's twice what a white um, cedar will be or a river bottom tree like a willow, etc. Now, something to note is the amount of bark that's on this will determine the amount of ash that's usually left in the fireplace. And the ash is not bad for you. The ash is pretty cool. Well, it's bad for you, don't eat it. But it's pretty good for plants. If you need to turn something basic, if you have an acidic soil and you need to turn it basic, that's where you'll spread some of your uh, wood fire ash out there. Uh, there are different minerals like boron, uh, copper, uh, potassium, etc. So those are the kinds of things that come out and that you can spread in a garden, uh, especially for tomatoes. It's, it does pretty well for tomatoes because tomatoes are highly acidic and they, they need that basic. All right, so coming to the firewood, we are going to need to build a fire. This is hard to ignite. These round uh, ones are rather hard to ignite. So it's nice to have a few split ones. So we'll come over here like uh, the boys split like this wood here. This is good because what we're enabled to do is uh, you know more surface area and it can ignite a little faster. So we're gonna get some of these beauties and uh, I'll show you a flash fire when we get inside. Uh, we won't light it because we're gonna do a long burn and uh, see what that long burn looks like as well. Thanks. All right, so to build a flash fire, according to this uh, manufacturer, they're gonna recommend you make a slight teepee style with lots of loose air pockets to allow lots of air to rush in. You know, put that in there and then we'll use a type of a kindling uh, product like this stuff. It's a soft uh, wood shaving option, or you can use this harder product, which is a, uh, a harder brick, and you can ignite this, put it under there. And again, it's very loose. It's very open. This will give you a very fast hot fire, um, and it'll burn for a couple hours and just give you some instant heat. If you're a commuter and you just return home, this is the fire of choice. Um, if you're going to be going to bed or you're going to be leaving for the day and you need to burn a long hot fire, I'll show you that one next. Now for the long hot burn, you're going to take your logs, your more solid logs that are harder to ignite. And we're going to put those in here. I'm going to put them in towards, towards the floor and we're pretty much going to fill up along here. And then we'll put our ignition pocket right here in the middle uh, towards the front. We're going to keep wood off of this little lip here. We don't want uh, anything getting in front of that air wash that cleans the glass. So now we're just continuing to load this thing, fill it up with wood, pull it out of my duck canvas bag here. Again, we're gonna tightly pack this one. We're gonna fill it up so that we can get lots of, uh, lots of fuel in there, get an all night burn. It's a cold night tonight in Colorado, so we really wanna get a nice long burn. a little bit longer log. It's gonna stick out just a little there. Now I'm gonna put a split log on top because I need something to ignite. And uh, so we'll see if this guy will fit in here. I gotta be careful that ceiling baffle looks like I'm getting close bumping on it. I'll just kind of push it around. All right, now next I'm just gonna take a handful of this uh, very easy to light uh, product here. It's a wax impregnated sort of sawdust. We're gonna sprinkle it, push it back into the pocket like that. Again, here's the stove view overall. Now we're down in the pocket. We've got our easily ignited combustible material back in there. You can use some paper to help accelerate burn. And then we're gonna just touch it off. And then we'll check on this in just a few minutes. See how- Okay, checking in. It's been about five minutes since the fire's been lit. It's burning a, a hole in the fuel load over on the left. And then it'll burn a hole downwards and transfer over to the right as the heat passes itself uh, around the firebox. We're gonna check back in in about 30 to 40 minutes when we're getting a surface temperature around five to 600 degrees Fahrenheit up here on this top plate. That's when we're gonna shut down the air control, uh, which we have wide open during the ignition process. All right, now with the Napoleon S25 has been going for exactly 30 minutes, let's take a look at our temperature gauge right here on top and it looks like we're running between four five to, and even uh, 600 when we go just a little further back you can see where my laser dot is just behind the shroud there so we're at 600 degrees there 
Uh, now it's time to go ahead and take a quick look at our logs. We've got our seven or so logs fully engulfed in flame. That top down burn absolutely lit beautifully. Um, we're gonna have a nice long hot fire. Now it's time to shut her down over here and we're literally going to uh, come over and put this in. Maybe that's 100% in. We wanna come out just a little. So again, 100% in, come out maybe 10%, something like that. And uh, we got a strong, strong heat signature right now. Again, the flames will darken to a more amber color from a yellow to an amber. You'll hear a pinging and a tinging on the, on the metal as the metal is actually um, stretching and uh, changing shape with the heat signature change. Logs fully engulfed. It's a beautiful fire, gonna burn for hours. Well, thank you for joining me on this uh, fire demonstration. I hope this is helpful to you and your family this winter as you uh, start fires in your wood burning stoves and inserts. Take care.